So this is Professor Vivek Oswani, who is currently working as the Dean at the School of Contemporary Media at Pearl Academy. All right, so Vivek, can you give us a brief outline of your career and what your main motivation was to be a Dean and um, yeah. So I started as an actor. I started by doing theater. I was in Campion School in Cathedral School and uh, Pearl Padamsi took me on and made me do a whole bunch of theater on the professional stage in English in Bombay. And I got to work with a lot of them. I got to work with Alec Padamsi. I got to work with Vijay Krishna. I got to work with Hosi Vasunia. I got to work with Ruby Patel. Uh, but there wasn't enough money, so I started acting in ad films. And then after that, I was approached to act in what was India's first soap opera on television. It was called Khanda. And it cast me among stalwarts. I was working with Tanuja and Shekhar Kapoor and Nina Gupta and Sriram Lagu. It became a hit. I moved on to acting in two or three major TV serials. But while I was doing that, I set up my own production company. And I produced my own television serial, which was called Nai Dishai, which was a story of a boy who's on drugs. Which led to me producing my first film, Gawahi, starring Zina Taman. It led to my second film, Patthar Ke Phool, in which I launched... Ravina Tandon. It led to my third film, Raju Bangia Gentleman, in which I launched Shah Rukh Khan. It led to my fourth film, Atish, in which I launched Sanjay Gupta. And it went on and on up to three or four years ago when I made my, maybe, I don't know, there were a lot of films, Rough Book. Rough Book was a film about education. It talked about education, it talked about teachers, it talked about students, it talked about parents and their interpersonal relationships. Rough book actually broke the bank. I refused to put it in the theatres. I created a new mode of distribution. I played it in schools. I played it in colleges. It's now on Amazon Prime uh, for four years in a row. But rough book led to me being called by a lot of schools, colleges, academies, education institutes, uh, basically to talk to the students, guide them and mentor them. Partly because of the things I said in the film. And partly because all my life I'd been making films with new directors, new actors, new technicians. All my assistants used to be new. They used to intern with me and then move on into getting successful careers. And Rough Book led to me being a guest lecturer at Pearl Academy, which has a school of contemporary media, which led to me becoming the dean of the school of contemporary media at Pearl Academy, which has now led to a very, very satisfying career uh, at the age of 59, uh, in academics, because being a dean is not just about teaching and mentoring. It's also about almost being able to run an institute. Uh, but while I do that, I also guide and mentor other children. I work with Shamak Dawid's children at the Victory Arts Foundation. I am in talks with Netflix to do a show for them, uh, one as an actor, one as a producer. And who knows what life is going to take me forward with. All right. Oh, sorry. How I got go on, into go on. this? Uh, yeah. How I got into this, which is part of your question, I got into it because I hated academic studies. I just couldn't cope with it. You know, I was the guy who said I would do science if there wasn't physics in it, and I would do commerce if there was no maths in it, and I would do arts if there was no history in it. So actually, uh, getting away from academics, uh, the only thing was acting. Partly because it looked easy. It isn't. I know that now. And uh, partly because uh, it was an escape route and Pearl offered me a job and I was doing plays and they were paying 50 rupees a show, but it was 50 rupees I was earning and bringing home when I was 16 years old. And the ad films used to pay 1,000 or 1,200 or 1,500 rupees. But in the early 80s, that was a fair amount of money. Khandan paid 700 rupees a day, which was a very big amount in the 80s. And then I went ahead and became an, a producer and because I launched Shah Rukh Khan, I became a big producer because I launched Ravina Tandon. I made a film called Everybody Says I'm Fine in English, in which I launched a director called Rahul Bose. I made a tribute to R.D. Burman, uh, directed by a debut director called Anant Mahadevan. I, so it just, before I knew it, without even thinking, I went onwards and I realized that education may not be something that you get out of textbooks. It is something that you do and get and achieve when you live life to your fullest and when you don't say no to anything. 
So since I did not say no to anything, I said yes to being a producer when I didn't know how to produce. I thought the unit could eat food that my mother made at home. I didn't realize that 200 people, you know, have a union meal, you know, they need. I didn't know how to direct films or write films, but I wrote four of the films I produced. I don't know how to mentor people, but the only thing I could do was share experiences, uh, work with them and make sure that it became into a mutual effort. But today, all those who were assistants at some point or all those whom I mentored, be it Ashutosh Gavarikar, who got Oscar nominated for Lagan, be it Sanjay Gupta, who's made a bunch of hugely successful films, including Kante, be it Sanjay Gadvi, who directed Doom and Doom 2, be it Rahul Bose, be it Anant Mahadevan, be it Mudasar Aziz, who's a campaign boy, whose last film was Pati Patni or Wo. I think... Uh, it just sort of happened and I just didn't say no. I think the key words here is to say yes to life and everything sort of follows itself. All right. So, wow, what a career. All right. So what guidance do you have for someone who looks to enter the film industry? The biggest guidance I would say is to understand what your job is. Everyone comes and says, we want to be an actor, for example. Nobody realizes that you don't get paid to act. You get paid to make a profit for your producer, which happens when your film gets distribution and there are only nine distributors. So your audience for your work is actually nine people, which means you have to understand the business. And if you want to be a star, your job is to sell tickets, to sell territories, to sell rights to Netflix. Your job is not to just sit and act. If that was so easy, then every single person who acted would be a star. So. The first guidance I give, understand the business. Really go inside and understand what your job is. You can't go to Jet Airways or to Air India and say, I want a job as a pilot. And they ask you what your job is and you say, I don't know. Your job is to fly a plane. Now, whether you know how to fly the plane or you don't know how to fly the plane is a separate issue. But at least you know your job is to fly the plane, then you can learn how to be. Now, you think your job is acting. I don't understand it because if the director doesn't like a particular shot and the editor uses it, your performance is not in your hands. If you want to do a scene a certain way and the director makes you do it in a different way, it's not in your hands. Performing has got nothing to do with being an actor of caliber. That depends on the director. And I'm talking about films. I'm not talking about television. And I'm not talking of theatre. So in a nutshell, cinema is about commerce. Television is about competence. And theatre is about craft. You have to make up your mind what you want to do and do it accordingly. Everyone thinks first we'll do theatre and then we can sort of jump into doing films. It's not true. You have to understand that if you know how to drive a truck, you may not know how to drive a plane. And if you know how to drive a plane, you may not agree. You may not know how to drive a car. So first is please understand very clearly what your career is going to be. Not I want to be an actor. I want to do theater in English in Bombay. I want to do web series only and I want them to be on Netflix. I want to be in cinema, but I do not want to be the person who sells the tickets. I want to be the supporting actor. Be very clear in your head. So instead of having dreams, have goals. And then move backwards from your goals into understanding what strategy is and move backwards into the most important thing, which is why I'm the dean of the School of Contemporary Media at Pearl Academy. Your talent is not as good as your qualification. If you want to act, you have to be qualified. If you want to direct, you have to be qualified. If you want to be a producer, you have to qualify. You have to know your job. I can't just open a restaurant because I like eating food. All of us, each and every one of us, including you, Johan, have grandmothers who was great cooks. Is your grandmother a great cook? Yeah. Is your mother a cook? Can they cook? Can yeah. they go to the kitchen and do stuff? But will they open restaurants? No. Exactly. So just because you know what good food is, or just because you can cook it, or just because you just like eating is no reason why you're going to open a, re a restaurant. It's about land. It's about architecture. It's about hospitality. It's about waiters. It's about union rates. It's about cooks. It's about shopping. It's about liquor licenses. It's about government formalities. If you know how to cook and it's a great talent, unless you are not qualified to run that restaurant, it won't work. So my advice mm -hmm. to all the people who want to enter into entertainment, and it is the biggest profession in the world today. Be qualified, 
your talent will take care of itself. You were born with it. It's not a major problem. But be qualified. All right. So thank you, Vivek. Thank you so much for your time. Enjoyed interviewing you. And good luck. Thank you, Johan. It was great fun talking to you. God bless.